I know how you're feeling. If you are watching this and you are currently recovering from tonsillectomy, I know the feeling, I know it's sore, but just, like I said, trust the process. It will pass, it will, you're not gonna feel like that forever, just remember that. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. Today I'm gonna talk about my tonsillectomy experience. So I don't usually, and I'm not gonna usually do videos like this. I had a tonsillectomy operation and it, was, it wasn't what I was expecting. And I just thought while I was going through this experience that I should share it with you guys because if there's anybody out there that I can help go through the healing process, then that means that I've done something good. And I would like to try and help someone because I didn't really expect what was going to happen, basically. So first of all, I took a video when I was in the healing process of what foods I could eat, what foods I kind of couldn't, what I had to stay away from, what I could drink, what I couldn't drink. Bear with how I look because I was still quite rough. I hope it helps some of you guys know what to go for with what to eat because I didn't really have a clue. And every time I looked online, I couldn't really find anything specific that would help me from someone who lived in England. Like I kept finding people from America and well they have different foods there so and it's just good to have like a UK brand that hopefully some of you lot could probably find so I'm gonna insert a video now of me explaining what foods I could eat what foods I couldn't eat and then I'll come back to you after hi guys welcome back to my channel what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take you into my kitchen right now and I'm gonna show you exactly what I was eating and then once I've showed you that if that's all you want to see then that's fine you can click off the video but if not if you want to actually hear my process my recovery then stay tuned because I'll be playing that next I'm on day eight at the moment so I'm still in a lot of pain so bear with my voice it's very hard to swallow my spit still <laughs> so yeah just bear with me and anyway let's go to the kitchen and I will show you what I was eating in the time I was off. So first of all, I started off with bread. I tried bread and butter instead of toasting bread and I just tried this Hovis uh, granary bread. Um, I must admit though, the granaries in it, it was quite a lot, a lot more difficult to chew it. That was tough, but uh, it got down the first, the, the second day after my operation, that got down okay, but after the third, fourth and fifth day, I couldn't, I couldn't eat that. They, it was too difficult. Oh, I remember what I also had on the first day. I had a smoothie. So um, I had a smoothie with oats in it. So I put oats in the smoothie and ground them up. And then I also put, I just need to look because I can't remember. I put blueberry, banana. What else did I put in there? Blueberry, banana, a little bit of cinnamon and some water in my smoothie. So it's a thick smoothie and that went down lovely. So this was day two I'm talking about. I could eat okay day two, it wasn't too bad. Day three, four and five really struggled to eat i've got my partner to get me some tomato soup which was this heinz tomato soup and it really really hurt i couldn't i couldn't eat with it it was it was really difficult to to chew, um to swallow it stung the back of my throat so bad and then i looked up a review on youtube and this woman said that she had noodle soup like a noodle broth and that went down really well so i got my partner to go out and get me some um of this basically it's a vegetable crystal noodle soup it's all natural gluten-free and it's actually a vegan dish <laughs> i say but do you know what they say to stay away from hot foods hot boiling foods but I just waited until this really, really, really cooled down and then I could um, eat it, but it took me bloody ages to eat it. So I had that at one of the days and I had an, another one of these the other day. Um, they're really, really nice actually. So I got my boyfriend to, st to stop me up on them. So I've got about three of these left. So that really helped. And I also found that I could eat a cup of soup. Try and stay away from any dairy products. The dairy products were probably the, the ones that you want to stick away from because they build up mucus in the back of your throat. And trust me, when, when I'm talking now, my spit, I know it's really gross, but my spit is building up in the back of my throat. So you definitely don't want to go near like yogurts or anything like that. They say to eat ice pops, but I have, have stayed away from the ice pops. I got my partner to get me some Ben and Jerry's ice cream. He got me this peanut butter and cookies non-dairy ice cream. So it's the vegan one. So yeah, I, I ate that a couple of the days, but I, could, I couldn't eat a lot of it. Like I would eat a couple of mouthfuls and then I'd be like, oh, I feel sick. But I think it was because I just thought of it going past my throat. It was really, really putting me off. And I think that my, oh yeah, and I'll, sh I'll show you what my partner bought me that I thought would help, but it, doesn't, it didn't help at all. I asked him to get me some cranberry juice because I thought that 
that might have been nice because I wasn't drinking a lot. Cranberry juice kind of is like a, it's quite good for your body. So it like just filters through. That stung like a bitch. So I couldn't, I couldn't eat that, uh, drink that. So that was good. Just like literally our fridge is so full at the moment because I haven't eaten anything. So yeah, the cranberry juice really, really stung for me. It didn't work. My partner also bought me a smoothie drink, which is a strawberry and strawberry and banana smoothie drink. And that really stung as well. I couldn't drink that. So maybe stay away from like, oh, the shop processed smoothies because they're probably no good. My partner did make me some cucumber water because uh, apparently cucumber water is really good like it's antioxidant so it's meant to be really good and it was nice because it was cold and it was going down my throat and it felt fresh and clean so that may be something that you might want to make. I think that might be it so I'm going to uh, thingy teeth in and the chips that I ate the second day were literally just methane special french fries. <laughs> they went down the white. Uh, so yeah, that's pretty much all I've eaten in the past eight days. It's been tough, I must admit. It's been really tough. When I had my cocodamol, I had to take it with juice. Oh, let me turn this way, sorry. Gavin bought me the Robinson's orange and mango juice that I had to drink. And that seemed to sting, but I managed to just power through it. I just, I was only drinking little bits of it at a time, so I just, I just went with it. But next time I got him to get me something that was a little less acidic because orange is obviously very acidic and he got me the summer fruits, the high juice, which is actually not too bad. It was nice, much nicer to drink the cocoa oil with. So that's basically the food that I've had and the drink. And basically I would just say for drink, just stick with water. Maybe cucumber water, that's quite good. Maybe make your own smoothie, but make it, don't make it too thick because it might be quite difficult for you to swallow. Yeah, and like, they're, the, they're the best foods I would say to, to stick to for now. I mean, that that's what helped me. That's what I could, I mean, you might even be able to eat. If you can eat, then eat. But if you can't, then maybe just stick to, like have a look around and see whether you can find stuff like I've got in my cupboards. Okay, so I hope that helped some of you guys. I'm sorry if it was all over the place. I was kind of dosed up on a lot of medication. So I'll start from the beginning. Going into the process was absolutely fine. And turning up at the hospital was fine. I went in quick. I got put to sleep. Um, when I woke up, I felt a little bit shocked. Like it was a bit weird. You know, when you come out of an operation, you're kind of like, what's going on? And then when I tried to swallow at that moment, I just kind of didn't realise how much I couldn't swallow. It was really weird. So it kind of felt like my throat was really, really swollen. And then anyway, they they dosed me up with tramadol and then they took me to my room. That day I could actually eat food and I remember eating a banana. I had, I can't even remember what I had now. It's so, it was so long ago that I just can't even remember. I tried to eat a watermelon. That didn't really go down well because I didn't realise how much you have to kind of chew a watermelon to actually swallow it. I can't even remember now guys, but it was, I know I ate that day and I didn't eat a lot. Then that night when I went home, you have to have someone stay with you for the next like 48 hours or the next 24 hours after your operation, just in case anything happens, like you get bleeding or whatever. It's not, it's just if you bleed in the throat quite heavily, then you need to go back into hospital. But if you just bleed this little bit, I think it's not that bad. Like just listen to your doctor, because I ain't a doctor. I'm just trying to give you some advice. So that night, when I got home, I went to bed. Basically, all they gave me was cocodamol and ibuprofen. And I thought to myself, is that, is, is that going to heal me? Because cocodamol, they only gave me enough for like five days, I think it was, or six days. And I said to them, is that going to heal me? And they were like, yeah, after that, you should be fine. Well, anyway, I took the cocodamol, which was fine. Went to bed that night, woke up about three times in the night in a lot of pain in my throat. It's always worse at the night time, isn't it? Because you're not really dosed up on as much. Then that night, close to the morning, sorry, I woke up and I remember feeling quite dizzy, but I needed the loo. And I, I stumbled to the toilet and I felt really dizzy. And I was like, oh my God. <gasps> oh, and I got sat down on the loo and I was like, oh, I put my head back like this, looked up. And I just remember seeing like white dots. And I think it was just where I was feeling really dizzy. And then the next minute I woke up on the toilet, I passed out. So our toilet, when you sit on it, I know this is a bit weird, but when you sit on it, there's like a space here at the back and I literally woke up like, like that. And I was like, oh, oh, what's going on? And I kicked, um, I didn't have a clue what was going on. And I kicked the loo brush over, which made a massive bang. And then my boyfriend came running and was like, are you okay, are you okay? And I was like, uh, I was like, help, help me. But he thought I said, yeah, I'm fine basically. And he started walking back to the room and I was like, help, help. And then he came to the toilet and he kind of helped me like get myself up and took me back to bed. But once I got into bed, I was like, 
Oh my God. I ended up falling back asleep. I had to go um, take to the Cocodamol again. If they give you Cocodamol, honestly, take it with juice. But I don't think I would advise taking it with orange juice because the orange juice, I think, was quite burning on my throat. Just try and take it with something like some type of flavour. Maybe like a pure juice, maybe. I'm not sure. But I had Robinson's. And then the next time I changed it to a high juice, which was a summer fruits, I think. Anyway, that was that. And then that day, funny enough, actually, when I woke up, finally, I could eat. And I ate like breakfast, lunch, and I had a bit of dinner as well. It was really minimal things like bread and what else? I think I had chips as well. Chips, just a bowl of chips. Chips, 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 chips. I like saying chips. And yeah, that was kind of, I, I kind of ate normally that day and it wasn't actually too bad. The next day, which is the third day, that was the toughest day I think ever. And I, when I started trying to swallow, that was when it was like, this is actually horrible, horrendous, just absolutely horrible. A lot of people I've noticed say it felt like swallowing glass, but it just felt like it did. It felt like you were just swallowing like lava. It was horrible, if that's how you say it, lava or lava, I don't know. I don't want to scare you guys, but my experience was horrendous and your experience might not be the same because when i was looking at videos on youtube some people were like oh it wasn't too bad but mine was awful and everyone's experience seems to be different i don't know why i'm doing this with my hands everyone's experience seems to be different so yours might be fine but as an adult it actually is worse and mine tonsils were quite scarred so apparently the doctor said the more scarred your tonsils are the worse it could be in the healing process so if your tonsils aren't that scarred, then you might be better than I was, but mine were really scarred. So the third day was horrendous. I couldn't swallow anything. I couldn't, I, like I literally couldn't even swallow my spit. It was horrible. I couldn't really drink any water. Like I was struggling to just drink. Eating alone was like the toughest thing. The only time I could eat was when the cocodamol kicked in and it, I had less pain. The fourth day was kind of the same as the third day and so was the fifth day. They were really tough. The sixth day was still tough, but I started feeling a little bit better. And around this point, I felt like I needed to spit a lot and it was like I could taste this horrible flavour in my mouth. When I spat, it was like pus. It was like really, really vile. It just it just looked like it looked like like green phlegm. <laughs> but it was I think it was just like I don't know whether it was like the scarring or I don't know. I don't know if it was rank. But the third, fourth and fifth day, the taste of my mouth was probably the worst taste I've ever, 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 ever had in my mouth. Like, the worst taste ever. <laughs> I can't stress it enough. It was the most vile experience. And even my partner said to me, like, and I know this is really disgusting, but I'm going straight in and telling you all the nitty gritty details. My partner said to me that my, like, you could, he could smell my breath even though you brush your teeth and stuff because your throat's healing it's scarred tissue at the back like it's trying to heal up he said he could literally smell my breath from like if i was downstairs in the living room he could smell it from like upstairs it was just so potent and like just bear that in mind your breath is probably going to stink like really smell really vile so just bear that in mind even though you brush your tongue as much as you could like it's not going to make a difference for the first couple of days trust me anyway i remember i started healing and i started feeling better and then I noticed that I got to like day six and I started taking the Cocodamol with the water. And I started noticing that when I was drinking the Cocodamol, like I would have to like literally go one, two, three, glug, 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 like glug it up with a straw because I just wanted to get it done and out of the way as quick as I could. And I noticed like as soon as I would drink, 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 I'd get this excruciating pain in my throat. Like I was just like, oh, it would hurt so much. It'd bring me to tears. And then I remember this one night, well, one morning, sorry, I did it. I woke up and I, and I, I drank this drink. And I thought, oh my God, I need to spit. And I ran to the toilet and I spat and I spat blood out. And I thought to myself, oh, surely these Cocodamol aren't doing me any good now. Like it doesn't feel like it's even helping me anymore. I just started feeling a bit funny about the situation. My partner called the doctors for me. I basically got prescribed liquid morphine and that did help a little bit but i weren't allowed to take it constantly i had to take it just like during night times or <gasps> oh there's two kites outside they're flying around together in a pair looking for food <gasps> ever so graceful sorry i'm in such a good spirit i think it's because i'm feeling so much better and i now appreciate how good i feel and i don't i'm not going to take it for granted anymore i'm not going to take for granted the fact that i'm going off track <laughs> So where was I? I can't even remember now. What was I saying? Oh my God, where was I? So I got put on liquid morphine and I also got put on, uh, I got put on, oh 
what do you call them? Fucking hell, I can't think straight. I got put on antibiotics. So I got put on antibiotics because my throat got infected, basically. So that was great. I thought, great, throat's infected. This means I'm probably gonna have to have even more time off. It was edging up close to, by this point, like get past a couple of days, I started eating better. I started swallowing better. Uh, but I was still in a lot of pain and it was purely because my throat was infected at the back and I thought that would happen. I think it's quite common. So I had a, a course of uh, five days, which they prescribed me in liquid form, which is good. So I had the liquid form antibiotics and the liquid form paracetamol. So I was taking that instead of the cocodamol and ibuprofen by this point. Now, I've never had such a long period of time where I've had to swallow so many disgusting things in my life. Like having to swallow... I'm also, I realise I say like a lot and I do apologise. It's just the way I am and I'm sorry. Like, I just did it again. Shut up, shut up, man. Um, <laughs> anyway, yeah, I've never had to swallow so many disgusting things in my entire life in the space of like two weeks. Like, it was just so disgusting. <sighs> I just don't want to taste that crap anymore. It's so rank. So I had it in liquid form and that helped. That really helped, but I still felt a bit rough. Now, once I'd finished taking those antibiotics, it was like a course of five days. After them five days, I was like, right, okay, I feel much better now. But then I left it a few days because I thought now I can start weaning myself off all this medication because I'm sick and tired of taking all this this medication. I feel all over the place. I didn't feel all over the place. I just think when you take that much medication, you're not yourself. I don't think, I feel like I'd rather just be clean and detoxed, if you know what I mean. I don't need all, I don't want all these drugs in my system. So I left it a few days and I started feeling okay, but then it seemed like it started getting worse again. And it looked like it was still infected. Like there was, there was a stage where it kind of, it was looking like it was healing, but then it started looking like it was blistering. And I didn't think that was normal. So again, I had to call the doctors again. And then they put me back on antibiotics for another five days, 10 days she said, but I only got put on it for five days. And I had to get signed off for another week. So all in all, I had three weeks off altogether, which is a very long time to be stuck in a house, personally, I think. But I got through it and I'm glad it's over. I just hope that you guys know, like, what you need to do is you need to have yourself elevated when you sleep in. Elevate yourself, get some ice packs, stick the ice packs on your throat, keep them there. I slept with an ice pack here on my neck and I would sleep upright with like two or three pillows and I would sleep with an ice pack here and it felt really nice and then throughout the day I, the night I'd swap it over I couldn't lay completely on my back because it felt like I couldn't breathe because your throat is so tightened just get in your comfies get lots of like tv channels or shows that you want to watch just binge watch those and just relax just take some time to just chill out I actually tried to go back into work so I had there was the last week I had off work I was off I should have been signed off from Monday to Wednesday and back in on the Thursday but I actually went back in on the Monday because I thought I felt better my throat was still sore but I felt better and when I got into work they said look we're gonna have to send you home because you're actually not meant to be in so bear that in mind if you've been signed off then stay off until you until it says on the doctor's note because legally your work can get sued for that or like it's not it's not legal to go back into work and for them to say yeah you can stay like unless you want the doctor to assign you back in really realistically if they signed you off for that long that period of time then you need to stay off for that period of time take take your medication make sure you stick to it make sure you take it at when it says just keep consistent with it just be patient trust the process and just be patient i know you'll get to a stage where you'll you'll be like when is this gonna end i just don't want to feel crap anymore though i ha i must admit i had many many tears many teary moments my mum came around with this beautiful green soup that she made for me which was completely vegan and it had all the good nutrients in it that I needed. And I remember I couldn't wait to eat it because I thought it's soup, I can get it down easier. And then the first few mouthfuls I took, it stung so bad. And I just, by that point, I just had a breaking point and I just burst into tears and I was like, I just wanna eat, I'm so hungry. Like you'll drive yourself so crazy because you'll be so, so hungry, but you cannot physically eat like all these things that you want to eat you and then once you recover once you start recovering you'll feel like you want to eat everything so to the point where you don't know what to eat and you've got so much food in front of you that you're like what can i eat and you just don't know because 
you've just been so hungry this whole time. You will lose weight as well. You will lose weight. I lost weight. I don't know how much I lost because I don't have scales in the house, but I definitely lost weight. And my partner noticed that I lost weight. And that's saying something because he spent the whole week with me. Bless him. He took a whole week off after my operation to look after me. And trust me, you may need it because you just need some help because you will feel so tired, weak, drained just from just healing. You just need to heal. You need to try and drink as much water as you can. As much as it's sore, just try. I know how you're feeling. If you are watching this and you are currently recovering from tonsillectomy, I know the feeling. I know it's sore, but just like I said, trust the process. It will pass. It will. You're not going to feel like that forever. Just remember that. You're not going to feel in pain forever. You will start feeling better. It's just a long process that you have to just, you have to just take. Think about it in the long run. You are going to not suffer with either tonsillitis or tonsil stones or strep throat again i think you have to do these things to feel better for the future and i used to get tonsil stones and that's why i had it done because i used to get them really bad constantly every day i was like had them in the back of my throat and it was disgusting i'm saying like again and i really do apologize so anyway i think i'm gonna leave it there because i think i covered everything i hope i covered everything i hope that i've helped some of you in some way kind of get an idea of what to you know the healing process i hope i've helped some of you out i, I want to apologize about the amount of energy i have right now but I, i'm not gonna because fuck it i feel good you know what i mean i feel good right now i feel good because i feel healthy and i just feel great like by the end of this process guys you are gonna feel so happy and upbeat and excited about life because you will realize in this whole three weeks, four weeks, that you take feeling good for granted, you take swallowing water for granted, you take swallowing food for granted, you take eating for granted. I did, I, I thought I appreciated the fact that I could eat every day, I could drink water every day and, you know, enjoy food and feel healthy. But I, did, I took it for granted and now I won't take it for granted. Everything I eat, I'm gonna thank the universe for giving me, and I'm sorry, I think I just spat, how disgusting. I'm gonna thank the universe for actually giving me a healthy body and a healthy lifestyle. So just appreciate, appreciate the fact that you can eat now. Like, just, stop saying like. Yeah, so you're just gonna appreciate the fact that you can eat and drink and feel excited and move around and have energy and feel just good, just feel really good feel good you know anyway i'm gonna leave it on that note have a fabulous day or i hope you all feel better soon if you are suffering with tonsillectomy right this very moment in time i hope that my energy i've given you some of my i've let off some good vibes in through the camera to you guys and i think i just spat again how disgusting and you have a better day because of it have a fantastic rest of your day feel better soon guys lots of love take care take care now bye bye then peace out guys Bye. I'm saying like again and I really do apologize. I just don't, I'm gonna try and control it guys because I don't wanna say like as much as I do. Like, do you know what I mean? Like, just, stop saying like. Shut up, shut up, Um, <laughs> God, shut up, my God. Anyway.